Okay, so uh, in this video, we're going to go through um, command groups, uh, in particular sequential command groups. I'm not going to touch on parallel command groups, but um, they operate fairly similar. Obviously, sequential would run different commands in order, um, and parallel would run at the same time. So um, we're going to do two sequential command groups uh, for autonomous and show you how to put them in a the smart dashboard um, to be selected. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go inside of uh, our commands folder and we're going to right click and we're going to create a new class or command uh, like we've done before except this time around you can see we have a parallel command group uh, we're actually going to create a sequential command group and we're going to call our sequential command group uh, autonomous one um, I would say in a in a game scenario, you may want to name these um, autonomous commands for maybe the position you're starting in or whatever. Um, but for now, we're just going to call this autonomous one and autonomous two, so we have two selectable options. Uh, and that's going to create a command group for us. Now, um, if we just kind of take a look at um, the the kind of constructor for this, we need to take in um, any of the uh, subsystems that we're going to use as arguments. So I'm just going to go drivetrain dt and I'm also going to, so I'm going to use like a drive this one's going to be like a drive forward timed and then auto shoot and then so I'm going to use shooter and s. Now you can just do the quick fixes here um, to import those classes. Um, and then we're just going to nuke everything inside up here. Now what we're going to do here is, this is, makes this pretty slick. This is how we can stack commands. Um, so we're just going to go add uh, commands. And then all we do here is we just go new. And we wanted to use drive uh, forward timed and we want to take in uh, drivetrain and then we're going to do the same thing here new um, auto shoot and we need to take in that shooter and that's really uh, all to all there is to kind of making a command group so basically it's just going to run this drive forward timed when that finishes it's going to run auto shoot and that's that's all there is to our autonomous one. So that's fairly easy. I'm just going to go save all. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to create a second uh, autonomous command. So uh, same deal. Um, like I said my preference is sequential command group. We can actually combine parallel and sequential, but I'm just going to go with this. Uh, sequ sequential command group, new. And I'm going to call this one autonomous2. And same kind of thing. I'm going to declare almost identical drive train dt shooter s. And then we'll quick fix those really quick. Adding the classes. Adding the classes. And let's get rid of this stuff. And Again, all I need to do here is add commands. And the command I want from drivetrain at this time is going to be uh, drive to distance. So we're using our rangefinder to distance. And again, that's going to take in that drivetrain. And then the second uh, one that I want to add here is again auto shoot. So new auto shoot. Yes, and then that's it. We've got two different command sequences that we can use. Uh, autonomous 1 and Autonomous 2. One's drive forward timed and then it shoots. And the other one is uh, drive to distance and then it shoots. So fairly straightforward. Uh, simple uh, command group sequence that we can use for Autonomous in our robot. So let's just pop over to the robot container and, and let's get these things declared. So obviously I want to declare them just like I have everything else. Private final uh, autonomous type 
autonomous one, autonomous one, private final autonomous two, autonomous two, and then I'm going to initialize them in the constructor. Just, I'm going to do that just, I think I'm going to do this under, uh, before the USB camera under the intake here, uh, autonomous one equals new uh, autonomous one. It's going to take in drivetrain, which is declared above. So we got to make sure that that's declared above. So I put these at the end. And then our shooter, and then same thing here, autonomous two equals new, new autonomous two, drive train, and shooter. Okay, so I have my two um, autonomous commands initialized there. Uh, now, we have a few other things we need to add. We need to be able to kind of select these in the smart dashboard. So we need to add a sendable chooser. So let me just kind of flip over to um, the robot container that I previously kind of um, programmed. I'm just going to grab um, my declaration for a sendable chooser, and then we'll kind of chat about this. So I actually want to go back up to the top, um, right underneath um, where I declared uh, autonomous one and autonomous two, and I'm just going to declare the sendable chooser. Now, that again is we're going to need kind of another kind of quick fix, uh, and that's going to import that sendable chooser, which is going to be good for a few things. Uh, mine is I'm going to call it chooser, so we'll take note of that. And then down here, after I've declared my autonomous commands, uh, I'm just going to bump over here again really quick. Um, I want to uh, add some things, so. Well, let's just grab this chunk of code just to save our time. And so after I've declared those two autonomous commands, now I'm going to add to the chooser, add option autonomous to autonomous to. So that's going to, that's going to do is kind of add that as an option for our chooser. And then we're going to set the default option autonomous one. Um, I could add as many of these add options as I could create. Um, for example, our autonomous issue, I think we have five just different autonomous commands. You could just keep adding options here. You don't need to add uh, the default option. Uh, just by setting as default, it adds that there. You want to have that in place so that if you forget to select something, hopefully your robot does something. Um, and now you can see here, um, to add to the smart dashboard, uh, I need to actually uh, import that library as well. And so now I have smart dashboard, put data autonomous, and then it's going to put that chooser uh, that we just created there. Okay, so that's good. Uh, now the last thing that we want to do, if you remember we set our autonomous way back and I think video one, uh, down here where it says get autonomous command, and we had it set to drive forward timed. Well, we're just going to modify that a little bit. Uh, we actually want this to be chooser, and we want it to get selected. Okay, so that when we select in the smart dashboard, uh, it's going to get that one uh, for our autonomous mode. Now, I'm not going to show you um, how this works in smart dashboard, um, but just let me tell you when smart dashboard configures up after you deploy your robot, uh, you will see uh, the options to select autonomous one or autonomous two. Uh, and that's it for um, getting your autonomous going. Now, the last thing I just thought I should show you before we kind of end um, this kind of video series here is, is I have, um, we only configured really one button. We configured that shoot button uh, to that bumper. Um, but say we just wanted to have um, a drive forward to distance uh, on say button A of our controller. I just kind of want to show you how we would we would do that. So, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to grab that because I, I programmed this previously. Um, but I just want to allude to um, the the two types of options we have with buttons. And so you can see this first button here that we programmed was the shoot button and it was using our Xbox controller called driver joystick that we declared up top to be um, uh, number zero, your USB zero. And then we're getting the right bumper value. 
And then notice though that the shoot button is well held. Okay, so that's something to take note of. So well held, it's gonna run that shoot ball. Now the other option that you have there, and I'll just show you with this piece of code, is if I had the A button, for example, here. I don't really like the way I've declared that. Um, A button set to driver joystick and button A value. Um, notice that we can have that set to when pressed. And that would make sense for a command like drive to distance because I just want to be able to press that button and it's going to run that once and it's going to it's going to end itself. So the thing that I wanted to allude to just at the end of this video here is that we have two options for buttons when we're setting those up while held and when pressed. Um, and that's a pretty good place to be at. I think um, we have our autonomous code set up. We have a couple command groups to select from autonomous. We've worked with um, a rangefinder in previous videos. We've got a camera set up. Pretty good place to be for maybe a rookie team uh, and a good base understanding of the command-based system. So that's going to be it for um, the the programming piece of our uh, tutorial. We're going to do just I'm going to do um, a quick video next just on um, how to set up and link your um, Visual Studio Code project to GitHub because it's really Microsoft owns the two products and they have a really nice tie in here that I'm going to go through in the next video. Um, but we'll see you uh, then.